Everyone, this is Raina Korea with Purpose and Passion. And I'm so excited today because I have somebody that's special to me in the radio industry. I go way back to where I was a youth advocate in Inglewood and received an award from the beat, if I'm correct. And um, I was trying to dig in my closet to find the award. I found all the other awards, but I couldn't find that one today. So my journey today with my guest is um, I got some roses for her because we forget to give them their roses while they're alive. And so it's very important for me to have brought that plaque because it was meaningful to me, but the flowers are also meaningful because everybody, if you know me, I love roses, I love flowers, and I think it's a beautiful gesture to tell somebody you love them. And so with that to say, I just want to welcome the beautiful Felicia, the poetess Morris, I radio vet. have to read that. Yes, yes, because I'm getting <laughs> nervous already. <laughs> radio vet and owner of Morris Media Studios. Thank you, the poetess, for coming on my show. Of course. Um, you mentioned the beat days. Yeah, that's when I first met you. You were just coming out of the your your gang culture. Yes. And <laughs> turning your life around and being an advocate for youth. And I've always admired you and respected your growth. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. That, yes. that, that, now uh, you're no, giving seriously, me my roses. <laughs> I've been following you all these years and we've been friends. It's yes, been at yes. least over 10, 15 years. Oh, yeah. Easy. You know, so. I was like 15 around that age. I was in high school when I met you. Yeah, so it's, it's been a while and just to see you grow is beautiful. Aww, thank so. you, thank you so much. So um, let the viewers know where your parents come from and where were you born and raised and how was your childhood? Okay. And you know, what was your journey? You know, like what did you wanna be when you grow up kind of thing after high school? Um, I'm from Northern California, the Bay Area. So I kind of grew up in the industry following my dad's footsteps. Um, he was a big radio DJ in the Bay Area and he would take me to concerts when I was a kid. And that inspired me a lot. And I knew at nine years old that when I finish high school, mm -hmm. then I'm moving to LA and getting into the music business. So then after you went to college? I did do some college, not very much. I will say that I had the wrong mentality. Mm -hmm. I felt like, oh, I'm going to be in the music business. I don't need to go to college, but I was so wrong. I always tell young people, please go to college, um, get your education, no matter what field you're in, yes. no matter how much money you're making. You know, um, now that I'm a businesswoman, I wish that I had gone to college and got that, you know, that technical training. Mm -hmm. um, I've made it and I survived it through, but I think that college would have enhanced my career much more. So when I hear people say, oh, uh, young people say, I don't need to go to college. I'm already making money, blah, blah, blah. But no, go to college. I believe mm -hmm. Megan B. Stallion just graduated college yeah, last year. Mm -hmm. And it's like, she has money, she's famous. She's getting and got her education. Yes. So I strongly um, recommend that. I did do a few years at uh, 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 Valley College. Okay. Yeah, so in, yeah. in the Valley. Well, I think education is important too. At the time, I was forced to graduate from high school. Um, and I was forced to go to college. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was one of those kids like, I don't need to go to college. I just want to work, mm -hmm. buy a house, right. buy a car and I'm straight. Right. Mm -hmm. And my mom was like, no, nah, like I didn't even finish college. And I want you to be the first in our family to finish college. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would, I remember my first semester at El Camino college girl, four fails, uh, four fails. Cause I was just going, but then I wasn't going, I was ditching and mm -hmm. my mom didn't know. Until my counselor told me, you have to retake the class or you owe the money. So that mm -hmm. meant that my mother was going to see that form saying, 
that she, she owes, owes money. money. Yes. You didn't want her to get that. Oh no, I didn't. <laughs> she is that my mom, my mom is the old school mentality woman. Uh I brought you into this bread, I'll take you yeah. out. Don't mess with my I mean, money. For good cause. <laughs> yes. I mean, you should be getting that education. <laughs> yep, so I did. And then when I graduated with my AA degree, it was for her. But then when I went for my my bachelor's at uh, Cal State Dominguez, when I walked that stage, it was for me. Yes. Because I started to understand that um, once you go through your junior college, it's kind of like going to high school again, but on a different level, right? Yeah. I, I When I was going to junior college, I said, in high school, they cared if you you attended. In college, yes. they don't care if you No, because it's, your, it's, it's you, on you. And you have to pay you. It's, it's on you. So <laughs> yes. if you miss class, oh, well, it's on you. Yes. Like, but in high school, they, they care, you know, it, about it's that more attendance. important. Yeah, the attendance. attendance is more important. But I actually became a better student in junior college. That's because awesome. um, I knew that I had to study. In fact, I, I, I think I was an A student when I was going wow. to college and computer tech and all of that. So, um, yeah, in when you start getting to junior college and, and college, you really have to focus on um, learning. Yes. You know, learning. Yeah, that, like I was yes. even getting into almost really getting good at geometry. I was like, oh, wow. Okay. Like, you got to like you gotta zone, <laughs> you gotta zone in though. You yeah, got to zone yeah. in. You got to listen to the teacher. You got to study. And, you know, and, and you'll get it. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. But like I said, when I went to Cal State Dominguez, it was no longer general studies is what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. And I took, um, my major was sociology because I like working with people, mm -hmm. you know, and then my minor was criminal justice because my dream was to become a probation officer, get all the way to the top and run all probation because there needs to be a lot of changes. And in, for somebody who's not, who knows and, and yes, has been there, yes, you yes, know, definitely. Yes. Yeah, so it's just so cool, you know, you know, about just sharing you know, your truth, because sometimes people don't want to talk about it, but it's like you're being very transparent with our viewers, which is awesome because you're telling your story and people are going to be inspired and learn from it. And especially the young people that are looking as well, you know, on a purpose and passion. So let's talk about your first your first opportunity in radio. Like this is crazy because I've never sat down and talked to you about um, this. So I'm really excited. So now I'm laying back now. OK, well. <laughs> When I graduated high school, Sequoia High School in Redwood City, that's up north. That's like in Silicon Valley. Okay. I actually was studying to be a um, studio engineer. I was one of the first programs that were training kids mm -hmm. to be engineers in Silicon Valley. I actually worked at Stanford Linear Accelerator Center and um, wow. Steve Jobs used to hang out there and I was 18 and I was a lab tech, you know, but it was boring. I, I was like, this is not I, at nine yeah. years old. It was already set in stone what I wanted yes. to do. So no matter what was going on <laughs> in high school, because I left an excellent career opportunity as a lab tech for Stanford. And I, I was I was pretty mature for my age. I already had an apartment with my boyfriend. So I was really leaving a lot behind, yes. but there, it was like, no matter what happens when I graduate, I'm moving to LA to get into the music business. So I moved to LA. My dad was already out here cause he was in the Bay area on the air and he got a job opportunity here. And so I moved here and moved in with him. And originally I wanted to be a studio engineer, mm -hmm. but I went to a few sessions with him and I was like, this is boring. <laughs> I can't. And so um, I started getting into hip hop and, and rap and just that whole community here in L.A. And I met Def Jeff and uh, we did a couple of demos. I ended up getting a record contract with um, Interscope, Poetic Groove in, in yes, 91, 92. Yes. And so I had, it, it was a short lived rap career, but it was, it was impactful for me. Like I recorded an album, I was on the radio, I toured the country a few times. Wow. And, and then in 1986, no, 1989, 
Lee Bailey had a show called Radio Scope, and he also had a syndicated show called Hip Hop Countdown and Report. So he invited me to be a co-host on there. It was syndicated, so I would come in every week and record yes. the episodes. And then um, Michael Mixon Moore, rest in peace. He was a, a, a famous mixer here in the in the um, '80s. Um, became the uh, mix show coordinator at ninety two point three to beat. And he asked me, did I want to come on Mike Nardone and King M's' show to mm. do just a little hip hop report? Because yes. I was already doing it syndicated and I was um, rapping still at that time. And so he thought I would be a good match for the show. So I came on and girl, when I came on, I just took over the whole show. I just like, <laughs> my little report was only supposed to be like two or three minutes. I was on there like for 15. I just, Yes. bombarded the show yes. I still find myself doing that a lot <laughs> just coming in and just taking over oh, but um, the music director heard me and she offered me a job she goes do you want to be on the air here now I used to record syndication I never had yes. live, live radio yeah. you know and I was like why not so I started doing weekends there and uh, I was pretty green in the beginning, you know, because I didn't really even set out to do radio. Yeah. I was going to be a rapper, you know. And uh, um, and then I ended up being at the beat for like 13 years. Like I yes. was the longest standing DJ there. Everybody was getting fired. I survived new management, new ownership. Everything. knew everything <laughs> and I quit I did I was never fired I resigned because I saw that the station was going in a direction that was n not of my particular yeah. liking you know mm -hmm. so I took I was already working for Sprint Mobile so I could yes. afford to kind of quit because I they were paying me more than the station actually and a few weeks later Jamie Foxx uh um I saw Jamie Foxx had a show on Sirius XM and, you know, me and Jamie go way back to before uh, he was famous. Yes. And um, and he, I called him. I said, hey, I said, I heard your show. You guys are crazy. I never heard just just such a, such outrageousness. Yes. Like I called him. I was like, yeah, this is your show is crazy. And he goes, come by, come by. And I was like, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. And so I run into Speedy, his other co-host. And he tells me I ran into Speedy in Atlanta and he was like, um, you should come by the show. So let me just come by the show. And so I came by the show and, you know, I was sitting on the sidelines and just watching. Jamie was like, no, I'll come sit at the table. Yes. So I sat at the table and I saw how unorganized they were. They were just <laughs> they just had newspapers and magazines and just snatching stuff out of the air, yes. you know. But I come from a radio background, so um, I started organizing even during the um the show i started organizing the, the the talk and so jamie goes um you know come by the house tonight so came by the house and he goes i want you to be a part of the show he goes i don't have any money to pay you right now but i just want you to come and be a part of the show. I was like, yeah, to come hang out on Fridays and yeah. laugh and drink and fun. eat and just have fun. Yeah, hey, just have yeah. fun. <laughs> so a few months later, they hired me and I was ended up producing like five shows on the Foxholes, uh, Sirius XM wow. network. And it was one of the highest paying jobs, one of the most fun. Um, I traveled the country a few times with Jamie um, and it was just one of the best jobs ever. So I'm going to say to some of the young people out there, sometimes you may not get paid mm -hmm. up front. You may uh, have to do a lot of things for free, but it's not really free. You're getting the experience. Uh, you're building the relationships. Um, I didn't, I didn't think twice about saying, sure. Like I could have yeah. did it continue doing it because it's the experience no pay. Right? It, it, it was fun and the, mm -hmm. for me it was the exposure i already had the experience uh, okay, so, okay um so i ended up 
working there a few years and then um Jamie got busy and they ended up taking uh taking the show off and then I got into internet radio podcast yes that was my next um my next thing was uh I saw this is where radio is going yeah and it was the freest form yes of broadcasting because with traditional radio you can't cuss you gotta stay within the confines of Time every second in traditional radio or terrestrial radio <laughs> counts. Yes, um, but we had a little more flexibility with uh, satellite radio. We can cuss. Yes. And we even got into a beef with Howard Stern because, like, every <laughs> week uh, it was like five comedians and me. I was yes. the straight person on the show, and. Uh, we had a beef with uh, a few people who were scared to even come on the show because yes. we're so vulgar. The show was yes. super vulgar. I'll <laughs> just say that. And then we even got a, into a beef with Howard Stern. And it was funny because uh, Howard Stern was talking about us on his show and he mentioned mm-hmm. me. He actually even played a clip of me talking about, I think I was talking about Robin or something. Mm-hmm. It was the whole Miley Cyrus thing because we went in on Miley Cyrus real bad. (laughs) And so bad, Howard had the nerve to say Say something something about about it. it. You know? (laughs) And so he said my name on the show. I go, oh, damn, I made it. (laughs) Howard Stern said my name, even though he was trying to lightweight diss me, but it was. Yeah, but it didn't matter. He said my name. (laughs) Right. So after that, um, um, when Foxhole was over, myself, well, one of the hosts, Speedy, um, started a an internet radio show, mm-hmm. and he, he, I was the last person he invited, but he invited me to be a part of the show, and it took off right away with um, fans, and and then from there, I had a few, uh, I had a downtime in my career where I was really struggling, mm-hmm. and um, but I had a few friends like Sway and. And people just kind of helped me along the way. And then I was commissioned with my dad yes. to build a podcast internet studio. Mm-hmm. And um, we built it. It was state of the art. I ran it. Um, mm-hmm. It was the first company I actually ran. And um, I was, when we built it, I started turning, making a profit within eight months of having it but the the guy who owned it was like um he, he you know he was an a-hole and so but i but when i look on retrospect mm-hmm. i had to go through that yeah training mm-hmm. to build my own studio because when it was over over there i go you know what i don't want to work for anybody anymore yes. the landscape of radio mm-hmm. has changed drastically And podcasting is where it's going. And I just, I set out to build Morris Media Studios. I didn't have a lot of money. I didn't have investors. I didn't have, I did a a crowdfunding campaign Mm -hmm. because I had fans who have been with me since my early rap days up to all my radio years. And really built a fan base on Jamie Foxx's show because then I was on a a national platform. So I took that and I did a crowdfunding campaign. I was able to, I raised probably close to $50,000. And then a friend of mine that I used to work for when I was a teenager said, hey, I see you're doing a fundraiser. How much do you need? Yes. And I was like, I need, you know, at the time I said 35,000. And he goes, well, come pick up a check like it was nothing. And so That's I said, a blessing. I said, well, hold on. <laughs> That's a blessing. I said, let me find a vi- a place because yes. I didn't even have a place, mm-hmm. but I had a business plan. I had the will to do it and um, found a place over on Crenshaw. I mean, I looked everywhere, Hollywood, yes. um, Culver City, everywhere. And and then a friend of mine says, I want you to come look at this place down yeah. the street from me. It's, you know, I think it's perfect. And then when I came in, I was like, oh, my God, this is perfect. Like it was already mm-hmm. a studio. 
the soundproofing, all my dad had to do was come in and and connect everything. Wow. Like all the wiring and the floor, it was already Man. laid out for me. Wow. I didn't have to do any upgrades or anything. Yes. And I said, oh. And when I got there, I go, this is this is where I'm supposed to be. And um, I brought my dad there. He goes, how are you going to have, because it's 1,800 square feet. It was a big building. Yes, like, yes, yes, yes. How are you going to pay for this every month? I go, dad, I don't know. But yes. I'm going to do it. That's right. And so the owners of the building, I paid with my friend that gave me the 35. Mm -hmm. I paid six months in advance. And I said I only had one conference room table. Yes. In the whole building. I didn't have any equipment. I didn't have anything. For six months, I sat at that conference room table, looked out on Crenshaw. And every morning I would hear this saxophone player. It was just. Oh, wow. It was just a beautiful thing. It was just like, okay, I, it made me feel this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yes. But I really struggled. And thank God that, I, and I really struggled and stressed out a lot in the beginning. Yes. But when I um, realized that this was my purpose, I didn't, because every time I didn't know where something was going to come from, it yes. came through. Like it came through, money before. came through. Like I just kept the faith and just kept going. Mm -hmm. There was a year that I even lived in my studio mm -hmm. because my lights were off at home, you know? And um, here it is, August will be eight years. And we've had just about everybody come through. Mm -hmm. And um, again, when I have those times where I'm like, oh God, I'm getting low on cash. with boom something oh, happens yes. like so um yeah and my dad helped me start the studio he's no longer with us he passed away in 2018 but you know his spirit lives on in there whenever i'm having some kind of technical issue i'll go yes, um yeah me yep <laughs> can I can he it. said i'm not gonna let you fail so even when i um yes. have hard times i always feel like okay something comes through so yes. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been quite a journey, but mm -hmm. I, I love, I can't imagine having to go back to work for anybody. Mm -hmm. Um, as long as I can see, think and breathe, I'm going to keep trying, you know, to get to where I need to be. So wherever that is, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Well, I like your, you know, I follow you on social media. One thing I like about you is that you're like the little sister or the big sister when it comes to rappers yeah i see you at the events and i remember i went to an event i forgot where it was at toyota something mm -hmm. and i wanted to see mac 10 perform and sugar free like sugar free like i can't say i'm a fan because i'm too old to be a fan but uh but i'm a supporter and no, i love you me. Man, i'm still fan okay because people, 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 people be telling me you can't i fan, fan like you the people i like and yeah. they may not even be the most famous people but yeah. if it's something about them that i like i like yeah them. and so, somebody had to taught me this and they kind of like made me not say fan i'm a fan it's i'm not, not a fan no, of yours that's a show of I'm respect like, right not, that's what i said i'm not, like it's not like i'm a group you don't like i ain't a group that's how i was a fan Right. And um, but Sugar Free is one of the rappers that would take that back. Because I mean, I love me some Tupac or Tupac in here mm -hmm. right next to Tupac is Sugar Free for me mm -hmm. because he has Creole roots, which, you know, makes me feel like it's home. Right. Because mm -hmm. my mom and the stuff that he says is so crazy that I've heard my Creole family talk crazy like that. So every time he's rapping, I'm laughing like this is what Uncle Earl could have said. This is what Uncle Warren could have said. You know what I mean? And his music is is just hilarious. It's fun. You can mm -hmm. dance. And so I was like, I haven't seen him in years and I want to go see him perform. Had no idea he was backstage. Yeah, uh, I, I, I know was West like, Coast. Oh my like, I'm a God. part of the history. I love it. Yeah, and so that's why I was like, what the heck? And I was there in like the second row because I made sure I was like, I'm going to give me some good seats because me and my husband, we haven't been out. We have five kids, you know what I mean? So I was mm -hmm. like, this is the day where we're just going to be like the old us mm -hmm. before the kids. Mm -hmm. And we enjoyed that day oh, night like good. no tomorrow. Good. But I love seeing the pictures with you and the rappers because it's 
it's a different type of vibe when you take pictures with them. It's like my little sister or my big sister. And I I'm love mostly that. the big I love sister that. now. Okay, okay. <laughs> or the auntie. <laughs> I'm mostly the big sister now, yes. I mean, because I, I was actually here at the really early beginnings of West Coast hip hop. I mean, I, I moved And when did that start, West Coast hip hop? Because I grew up in the 90s We with the gangster rap, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I would say the um, early 80s, Okay. you okay, know, okay. Um, but I came here in 85, um, the, the, the hip hop scene was just starting to blossom here, um, it was... And NWA just came out. Wow. Um, you know, uh, Egyptian Lover and LA Dream Team were still mm -hmm. doing their I thing. I remember that. And um, yeah, so I was pretty much around before Snoop, when Snoop was a baby in the game. Yes. Gas. In fact, I was on Interscope, and on my way out of Interscope, Death Row was on their way in. So mm -hmm. it's. Um, and when I met, I met Snoop when he, like I said, was a baby in the game. But I was at the beat. Uh, I started the beat in 93. So that's when yes. the whole chronic and oh, man. everything was Powerful. starting to Woo. explode. I remember Biggie's uh, first visit to the radio station promoting uh, Juicy. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, my, my roots go uh, really deep with hip hop. So, yeah, when you see me out, um, I've been knowing all these guys since really the beginning of their career. So yes. I'm just like, I'm glad I came to L.A. when I did to be able to say that, yes. you know, and then, you know, um, I no matter what they rap about or you know, th they've always shown me the utmost respect. Oh, yes, Even of the raunchiest and most vulgar rapper. Yes. Wherever I go, I've just, I can just feel the respect. And yeah. I appreciate that. I can that. see it. That, and that's yeah. what I like. I'm like, wow, this is, this is really awesome. Like, just to see, you know, a woman, but well-respected. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And with all the rappers, whatever. So I noticed that. And I was like, let me talk about that because that's really important because sometimes, you know, we live in a society where women are not respected. You know what I mean? And um, just to see that, it's beautiful to me, you know? And, and I think about like, just imagining like when you were at the beat, like how many rappers you interviewed, how many are, you know, R&B, uh, women that mm -hmm. you've you know interviewed mm -hmm. so who was like your top interview in the rap game like your number one that you can be like man this was a classic um my dr dre interview um because he rarely did interviews mm -hmm. and um or still now he rarely does interviews i interviewed him in his home me and him chilling in his living room yes so that that's a memorable one, and I've all, I've uh, interviewed Snoop a number of times. Um, in fact, I have a beautiful archive of interviews that I'm working oh, on wow. repurposing um, somehow, maybe with a scripted podcast or a docu series or something, because I have like thirty years of um, interviews from these guys. You yes. know, when they first started, so I'm working on repurposing that and. As far as respect, um, I would tell young ladies out there, mm -hmm. and I, a friend of mine just sent me this quote um, yesterday. It says, don't be, uh, be unbothered and unapologetic when it comes to protecting your humanity and your dignity. Mm. And, um, it is the way you carry yourself. Yes, of um, course. Where people know, don't bring that mess to her because mm -hmm. she ain't having yeah, I mean, it. Been, yeah. And it's okay to have that attitude. Yeah. A lot of people would and say, sometimes they you're you. so mean, you're <laughs> so that. No, I am just not with the BS. Yeah. Don't even come to me with that, yes. you know. And um, I probably did have a little attitude in my younger days. I, I'm getting <laughs> softer and sweeter the as older you get older, <laughs> you know. But um, 
Yeah, maintain your <laughs> dignity and your respect. You don't, I've never had to sleep with anyone I didn't want to sleep with. I hear you. <laughs> um, so, you know, um, if that opportunity passes you by, there's the universe is abundant. There's plenty of opportunities yes. out there. And you don't want to be working with a, a person that makes you feel uncomfortable or yeah. out of your moral a compass you yes, know what i mean so i've been able to manage to navigate through this with everybody getting respect from everybody even there's been a few times where mtv has sent me out on gigs and they're like well this artist you know be careful they you know yeah. they, they might disrespect you or they might do this or do that but when i get there it's just the opposite it's it's almost kind of weird, weird. yeah you know? it's like Is this person i like, remember yeah. for example um they wanted me to uh interview uh, Odd Future with Tyler, the creator. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, God, he's really crazy. You know, just be real careful. <laughs> but when I arrived on the set, he's looking like, probably like, who is this auntie? Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. Who is this girl? You know, and and there was a lot of people on the set, but I caught his eye because I probably mm -hmm. didn't look like I fit in there. But um and he was very respectful, very wow. nice, very nothing like how they prepped you. Yes, <laughs> and the same with Little Wayne. They were like, "Yeah, you're gonna go out and interview Little Wayne. He could be a little, you know, this or that." And I go, "Okay, then go to Little Wayne. Oh my God, he's the most polite yes, guy." I goes, can imagine. Um, excuse me, I need to take this call. Can you? I mean, he was just so yeah, with respect. You polite. Can see, yeah, people don't see that side. Yeah, of so him. it's just like it's really how you carry yourself always be professional yes you know um i've worked around you know a lot of millionaires and just do the work mm -hmm. do your job do uh be professional yes. you know if someone's hiring you to do something you do that job yes don't try to hang out and be friends and blah 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 um i mean it, it could be like that but Always, yes. when you're with your boss or keep someone's professional, paying, keep it professional. Mm -hmm. Period. You know that makes sense. So you guys better remember that no matter what, you always keep it professional. <laughs> yep, keep it professional. Yes. Do the work. You know they say this generation of um, young people don't want to do the work. Do the work. Yeah, it I, builds character. It sure does. It builds your foundation. Um, you won't just be a fly by night type of person. You'll yes. have a foundation, you'll have the experience and you, it'll help you expand your skill set. because even right now, mm -hmm. like when things were with the pandemic, I, um, business got really slow from, it yes. still is slow, but I can edit, I can do so many things. Yes. So now I'm maximizing my other skills. Yes. So it's important to learn as much as you can, do the work, get the experience, and you'll you'll last a long time in this business. Something is coming to me right now regarding what you were talking about, like the footages that you had mm -hmm. with, with you know with celebrities or rappers. Mm -hmm. um, you should do i don't know if it's youtube or you can create your own network to where people can pay to see these things because i see a yeah. book i see i see i a, started a book i see a book and i started I a book. It with pictures and describing yes. because not very many females have done projects that document the history yes. of west coast yes. particularly so. and and if if and if it's about west coast it's always a man narrating the right. situation right. it's never a woman right. i have some ideas in mind i just have to dedicate more time to it yes. um, because i am running a business and trying to keep my you know my doors open mm -hmm. so it, it takes up a lot of my time, but I know that this is an important thing for me to do. I was also thinking about doing a, you know, a scripted podcast okay. series, um, tell my the story from my perspective. Mm -hmm. So, and then adding all the sound bites mm, yes. and elements to it. So, there's so much I can do, and so many opportunities that mm. I have in LA. And it's just because I see it on Netflix. It's crazy. Like when God shows me things, I'm just like, it's just like. 
And I have I, the opportunity. I, I have see, an open I door see. to go anywhere. I just have yes. to. Yes. You got to do it. Yes. And you need to do it. And you need to do it before the end of this year. Yes. Meaning like at least make well, sure the task this is complete. Is the other project I want to do. Okay. And I'm going to put it out there so that I can, <laughs> you know, really yes, try to do it. This year's the 30th anniversary of the release of my album. And I never released The first it. one, right? I only like, did one yeah, album. album. Okay. So I never released it digitally. So I'm thinking oh. about releasing the album digitally and putting some new remixes or a new track on there and um, and just throwing it out there. You, you know, should. Do a whole campaign. Yes, know? no, so, you should. I, I'm getting a good vibe about that. And I'm like, you know what? My album, it's not like my album went gold or platinum or no, anything. No, but it's still but your still, album. It's still your yeah, album. You so, know how many people, like that's why I tell people right now, they're, you know, I'm running for Mayor Vinglewood. People are like, well, what about if you don't lose? I'm like, I'm a winner regardless. How right. many people you know that says, I'm going to do this and they do it? Right. It's a few that can right. say that. So it doesn't matter. It's yeah, your album. I, I, I already have the mindset that I can do whatever I set my yes. mind to. So it's just like, okay, set your mind to that. Get yeah. it done. But you like, need to have a, 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 a like a release party too. Like with the oh, band jump. Okay. I'm going to have. Because I'm, I'm have seeing it already. I'm yeah, seeing I'm, it. <laughs> this is my idea. Um, DJ EQ was my DJ then. I was thinking about having a photo shoot, like redoing our album. The album, nice. I still have the, the, the clothes I wore on my album cover. I don't know yes. if I can still fit them. But we can alter them, <laughs> open them up and add some more. Yeah, so I said, <laughs> I should reshoot. Yes. Do a photo shoot, just reshooting that whole album cover do that yes um yes have the album release party and then see if a few of my producer friends you like know that they come in no they're gonna I come through do, because do a because it's, a, it's an anniversary it's it's momentum it's momentum because it's like you've been there to support people so this is the time for them to come back and support you like i see celebrities coming through i see them taking pictures in the backdrop i see it already like i already see it. i would and you know where i'd like to do it i'd like to do it at snoop's place snoop has a really cool place is that the Inglewood. one by Inglewood? yeah, yeah by so, la cienega or something whole, like that yeah he calls it the compound yeah so everybody be, call it the compound now because he yeah. says the compound yeah, yeah. so um yeah. Well, so you know, I'm coming if it's ink or what. I just have to, <laughs> I just have to, again, that's just one of the many great ideas I have that yes. I have to put in motion. Make it happen, you know? though. I will. I Make will. it I happen. I don't, and I'm going to follow up with you. Okay. And talking about following up, let me follow up on myself. So you heard my little beginning intro. So these flowers are for you because I want to give you roses now. Okay. Okay. Congratulations for still being in radio being a successful woman you are in your own right you know what i mean i admire you you inspire me and i wanted to just give you these flowers to say oh, thank you thank you and i accept them thank you so much and, and the feeling is mutual like oh, i said i enjoy you. watching you grow because i knew you when you were a teenager yes you were still a little rough neck but you <laughs> But you smoothed out into a beautiful yes. diamond. Yes, and, thank you. Um, and keep on doing your thing, sis, for sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you. So everyone, you know, I'm just going to be closing out with this. If you have somebody important in your life, always remember to reach out to them. You know, pay a visit. Give them a call. You know, be supportive. Because, you know, during this pandemic of COVID, a lot of people lost a lot of people. And tomorrow's not granted and guaranteed. So I'm just saying, like, if you have the opportunity to give back to somebody you admire, whether they're your mentor or your friend or just somebody you love, do that. Do that. Don't waste no time. And so today I just feel honored to be able to give my friend, the poetess, her flowers. You know what I mean? And um, I can't wait to see what she has in store coming up, you know, for the ending of this year and also for 2023. 2023 is going to be huge for women. This is just the beginning this year because we're coming out of a pandemic. But 2023, COVID will not exist anymore and we're going to be back to normal life and it's going to be the year of the woman to conquer everything that she desires. Until then, this is Raina Grill with Purpose and Passion. Peace. 
glutathione is a big word. It's the body's own master antioxidant. It's a scavenger for free radical, bacteria, and viruses. There are no products in the market with the ingredient NASET. NASET increases the production of glutathione that's in our body already to strengthen and enhance our immune system, elevate sense of well-being, support muscle strength and endurance, cognitive function, and liver support. It helps with increased energy and blood sugar regulation. Get your bottle of GSH Plus from www.salvationnutra.com.